What are the different types of stem cell transplants? So there's two kinds of, of transplant. There's an autologous using a patient's own stem cells and allogeneic using stem cells from a donor. So autologous really counts on the high-dose chemotherapy we give before the transplant as the way to control the disease. Allogeneic transplant counts on the new immune system from the donor as the way to control the disease. There's a third type of transplant called a syngeneic transplant, which we will cover more in depth in the allotransplant class. These are transplants that are conducted with an identical twin. And the source of stem cells can vary, but typically for autologous stem cells, we, we harvest them from the blood nowadays. We call them peripheral blood stem cells. And the idea with that transplant is we will be introducing high doses of chemotherapy, and that is designed to eradicate large amounts of disease in the bone marrow, but it's very nonspecific. It also kills stem cells that live in the marrow. We rescue patients after the chemotherapy with stem cell infusion, which then repopulates the bone marrow and the bone marrow grows back. Allogeneic transplant works in a little bit different way. We rely on intensity of chemo to kill myeloma, but when we put in cells from another person, you also inherit their immune system, and that immune system starts developing in the recipient's body and sees differences on the myeloma cells and recognizes them as foreign tissue and goes and attacks them. We call that the graft versus myeloma effect. And it can be very powerful. It can eradicate myeloma even when chemotherapy doesn't work anymore. However, with allogeneic transplants, there's a lot more complications. When you have the donor cells attacking the myeloma, they attack the myeloma because it looks like the recipient. It looks different to the donor cells, but the rest of the host also looks different. Normal tissues can be attacked, and we call that graft versus host disease. That's the major complication, and that can be very difficult to manage. So allotransplants are done in more selective cases in myeloma patients because of that complication. Autologous transplants are more commonly used in multiple myeloma. That's based on a study showing that use of these uh, procedures leads to deep remissions in patients, which can be maintained over time. Although it's not curative, it can extend the period of remission significantly. In myeloma, we tend to do more autologous transplants. In fact, we do over 8,000 transplants a year in the United States. Myeloma is the leading indication for autologous transplant.